Equations. Introduction to Graphing with me, Catherine. As we get started, the first thing we should talk about is this weird looking picture, the graph. The graph is called the Cartesian plane and it's named after the mathematician Rene Descartes. Some textbooks will call it the Cartesian coordinate system, the coordinate plane, or the rectangular coordinate system. And that's what we're going to call it, the rectangular coordinate system. You're going to notice that it has two number lines that intersect. This one is called the y-axis. The y-axis is the thick line that runs vertically on the graph. And then we have this one, the x-axis. The x-axis is the thick line that runs horizontally on the graph. The graph is divided into four quadrants. The quadrants are always labeled with Roman numerals and always run counterclockwise. Let me show you. This is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So how do we graph? Well, we're going to be graphing using something called an ordered pair. Yep, an ordered pair. When I think about the words ordered pair, ordered means in order, like when we talk about numbers, one, two, three, and so on. The word pair means two. So when we graph, we're going to be graphing two numbers written in order to make a point on our graph. That means we're going to intersect at these two points. The ordered pairs are always x, y. One point from each axis. The points are always listed in alphabetical order, separated by a comma. And finally, you always place a parenthesis around the numbers. I do want to mention that the words plotting and graphing mean the same thing. Let's plot or graph these. We're going to graph the ordered pair 3, 5. What we're going to do, we're going to put our pencil in the center. We're going to graph three places on the x, and then we're going to go up five places on the y. And that's where we put our dot. That ordered pair is 3, 5. Let's do negative 6, 2. We start with our pencil in the center. This time, we're going to go to the left 6 to the negative 6. Then we're going to go up 2 and put a dot. This dot is at the ordered pair negative 6, 2. Let's graph negative 9, negative 7. Once again, we're going to put our pencil in the center. We're going to go to the left to the negative 9. Then from that place, we're going to go down to the negative 7 on the y. Remember, ordered pairs are always x, y. And here's my dot. And this spot is called negative 9, negative 7. Let's try one more. 8, negative 4. First, we go to 8 on the x-axis. We're going to the right because we're going in the positive direction. Next, let's do the y value, negative 4. So we're going to go down to negative 4. And guess what? That's where we put our next dot. This one is 8, negative 4. Not too bad, right? This time, you're going to pause the video, graph the order pairs, then press play to check. Let's see how you did. Here's 7, 3. Remember, I went to the 7 on the x-axis and then 3 on the y-axis. How about 2, negative 9? I went 2 on the x-axis and negative 9 on the y-axis. Cool! Let's look at negative 5, negative 1. I went to negative 5 on the x-axis and then negative 1 on the y-axis. Hopefully you remember to label it. 
Let's look at the last one, negative 3, 8. I want negative 3 on the x-axis and then 8 on the y-axis. Cool! Let's look at a couple special ordered pairs. Let's look at what we call the origin. Yep, the origin is 0, 0. That's the center. How I like to remember it, and this might sound weird, but I think of Rudolph with his red nose, right in the center. I know, it's kind of funny, but it's one way to remember it. You'll also going to remember that that's how we always start an ordered pair, from the center, or the origin, 0, 0. We also have something called the x-intercept. The x-intercept is on the x-axis. The x-intercept always has a number for the x and zero for the y. Let me show you an example. Eight zero is an x-intercept because eight is on the x and it goes zero on the y, it goes nowhere. The x-intercept is always on the x-axis. Let's look at negative 6, 0. The y-intercept is another one. And you got it. The y-intercept is on the y-axis. The y-intercept is always 0 for the x and some number for the y. Let me show you an example. 0, negative 4. You'll notice that it's 0 on the x, negative 4 on the y. What about 0, 7? Once again, it's 0 on the x and 7 on the y. Okay, it's time for the self quiz. You're going to pause the video, graph the points, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. Number 1 is negative 2, negative 8. That means we're going to go negative 2 on the x and negative 8 on the y. I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's really important to label them. Let's look at the second one, 5, 0. That means I'm going to go 5 on the x and 0 on the y. Do you remember what this point is called? Yep, it's called the x-intercept. And here's my label. Let's look at 7, negative 2. That means I go 7 on the x and negative 2 on the y. Let's look at number 4. 0, 0. Well, hopefully you have this one under control, because remember I said it was Rudolph? Anyway, 0, 0 is the center, and it's also called the origin. Let's look at negative 7, negative 9. We're going to go negative 7 on the x, and then negative 9 on the y. Awesome! Before we finish out this video, we should talk about ordered pairs as a solution to equations. This is actually how we're really going to graph. The first thing I would like to talk about is the name of these videos, Graphing Linear Equations. Hopefully you're going to see that we have the word linear, and in the word linear is line. Yeah, the graph of a linear equation is a line. Next, we're going to find solutions that make a linear equation with two variables, x and y, true. What exactly does that mean? Let me show you. We're going to determine if the ordered pairs are a solution to the equation. Let's see if 5, 4 works. Remember, 5 is the x and 4 is the y. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute the x and y into the equation. Here's my equation. And you know from previous videos that I like to put parentheses around my variables. Here goes my 5 into the x and my 4 into the y. You're also going to notice that I have a question mark above the equal sign because we're not sure it equals yet. Well, 5 plus 4 is 9 and 9 equals 9. So what does that mean? This means the ordered pair 5, 4 is a solution to the equation x plus y equals 9. In the next lesson, we will draw the line x plus y equals 9 and it will include the point 5, 4 because 5, 4 makes the equation true. Let's look at this ordered pair, 3, 7. Once again, we're going to substitute the 3 in for x and the 7 in for y. 
I put parentheses where my variables were. Remember, I have a question mark above the equal sign because we're not sure yet. 3 goes in for my x. 7 goes in for my y. Well, 3 plus 7 is 10, and 10 does not equal 9. This means the ordered pair 3, 7 is not a solution to the equation x plus y equals 9. And in the next lesson, when we draw the line x plus y equals 9, it will not include the point 3, 7. Here's one for you to practice. You're going to pause the video, figure out if negative 5, 8 is a solution, and then press play to check. Let's see how you did. We're going to substitute negative 5 for x and 8 for y into the equation. Here's my equation. Once again, I put parentheses where I need to stick my numbers. So we have negative 5 and 8. Well, negative 5 plus 8 is 3, and 3 does not equal 9. This means the ordered pair negative 8, 5 is not a solution to the equation x plus y equals 9. In the next lesson, when we draw the line x plus y equals 9, it will not include the point negative 5, 8. Find the ordered pairs using a table. Now this is exactly the same thing that we just did, but we're going to create an x, y table. Unlike the last one where I gave you the ordered pairs for x and y, I gave you the numbers. Whenever we have a table, we pick a random number to put into x. We just pull it out of the air. And then to find y, we substitute the x value into the equation and then find the y value. Let me show you how we do this. I picked 0, just a random number 0. Then I'm going to put 0 into my x value, into my equation. 4 times 0 is 0 minus 5. That means that y is negative 5. It also means that 0, negative 5 is our first ordered pair. Okay, let's just pick another number. Oh, let's say negative 3. Remember, I'm just randomly picking a number. Once again, we're going to put that into my equation. We're going to put that in for the x value. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 5 is negative 17. That means that the next order pair is negative 3, negative 17. Let's try one more. Mm, how about 1? Once again, I'm going to put 1 in for my x value. 4 times 1 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. That means my next ordered pair is negative 1, negative 1. Well, I gave it a little bit away here. You're going to practice this one. You're going to use the x values and find the y values, just like we did. Let's see how you did. For the first one, did you get 3? Yeah, because when I put 0 in for x, negative 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 3 is 3. So our first order pair here is 0, 3. The next x value is negative 1. Did you get 5? Yeah, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, and 2 plus 3 is 5. The last one I chose was 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Awesome. Here's the self quiz for these guys. You're going to determine if the ordered pair is a solution for the equations. Now it's your turn to try. You're going to pause the video, determine if the points are a solution, then press play to check. Let's see how you did. Number one says, determine if the order pair negative 5, negative 4 is a solution to the equation x minus 3y equals 8. Nope, for this one, the ordered pair negative 5, negative 4 is not a solution to the equation x minus 3y equals 8. Let's look at number two. Determine if the ordered pair 3, negative 1 is a solution to the equation y equals 3x minus 8. This one, once again, is a no. 3, negative 1 is not a solution to the equation y equals 3x minus 8. Number 3, determine if the order pair 3, 4 
is a solution to the equation 2y minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. In this case, yes, 3, 4 is a solution to the equation 2y minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. If you got these correct, awesome! But how about I show the rest of us how to do this? Let's look at number 1. I rewrite my equation, then I put parentheses around my variable. You'll recall that I have a question mark over the equal sign because we're not sure it equals yet. I'm going to substitute in my x and y. Negative 5 plus 12, well, negative 5 plus 12 is 7. Since 7 does not equal 8, the ordered pair negative 5, negative 4 is not a solution. Let's look at number 2. Here's my equation. I put parentheses around my variables. 3 goes in for x and negative 1 goes in for y. Did you put the numbers in the right spots? This gives us negative 1 and then 9 minus 8. Well, 9 minus 8 is 1. Since negative 1 does not equal 1, the ordered pair 3, negative 1 is not a solution. Let's look at our last question. Here's my equation. I put parentheses around my variables. 3 is x, 4 is y. Once again, did you put the numbers in the right spots? That gives us 8 minus 9 plus 1. 8 minus 9 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. That means that yes, 3, 4 is a solution to the equation. Thanks for watching! Did you happen to know that there are video guides and worksheets available for all of the Pi Crustable Lecture Series? Yeah! Make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss the new videos. You know what? I like this stuff. Have a request? Let me know at piecrustable at gmail.com or in this YouTube comment box below. Once again, thanks for joining me in graphing linear equations. You don't want to miss the next one because it's just as exciting.